Hi guys and welcome to Freckle Finance. Today I'm going to do a video on food planning. So as I've said in the previous video and as well in another video, food planning is a great way to save money. So I'm going to go over in this video what food planning is, how to food plan and just some strategies of food planning. So aside from the financial benefits of food planning, there is also several other benefits of food planning. The first is that you will have less food waste overall. So that will cost you less money generally, but also it's better for the environment that you're wasting less food. Secondly, you can ensure that you're eating food that tastes good and also is healthy for you. So you're able to plan that the food is healthy and also tastes good, encouraging you to want to eat the food that you have purchased. And thirdly, although this is not an all encompassing list, you do not have to worry about running out of food before you have time to go grocery shopping again. The first step to food planning is to figure out just how many meals you actually need to plan and how many servings of those meals. Usually I start off with assigning leftovers that I have onto the next week if there is any to ensure that I will not only be using the leftovers but that I won't be over purchasing the next week. As well, depending on how bulk meals are that you make, you may be assigning the same dish to several nights or it could become lunches or anything like that. And the more bulk that you make your meals, generally the cheaper the food is to purchase because you are able to buy them in a bigger size at often a discounted rate. I also like to plan to make sure that there is enough food for breakfast. However, if you are people who just eat cereal and milk, just make sure there is enough cereal and milk for the week um, and ensure that's on your grocery list. And it's important to make sure that you are adding snacks to your grocery list, a healthy and probably some junky ones so that you don't end up running out and getting some junk food because most people can't handle a full week without eating any junk food. If you have plans to go out for dinner one night or you're not going to be home, you're going out to a friend's house for dinner, ensure that you do not include that when you're trying to figure out how many meals to buy because then you will have uh, food that carries over into the next week. As well, if you're busy, let's say um, soon after you come home, you're gonna have to bring your kids somewhere. Make sure that you are bringing, purchasing snacks that are easy to bring along, or maybe you're purchasing meals that are easy to eat on the go. So just make sure that your food that you're planning for actually fits in with the lifestyle that you live and what you will be doing that week. Oftentimes, I find that the times you end up running out and purchasing last minute items or going to a restaurant that was unplanned is because you you may have food planned, but you didn't food plan properly. So you were gonna be on the go that day and you plan to have an hour and a half long dinner or dinner that takes an hour and a half to make. And it's just, you have to make sure that it's working with what your plans are for that day. So after I've kind of figured out what I'm doing that week, how many meals I'm making, I pull out a bunch of my cookbooks and I sift through them and I kind of figure out what do I even feel like eating this week? Now I find for me that looking through cookbooks helps me get excited about the food I'm gonna eat, making sure that I'm eating stuff a variety, like a variety of different foods and flavors so that I'm not getting bored with my food. Also, which can cause you to quickly go out and eat at a restaurant because you're sick and bored of the food that you're eating. But also, cookbooks are a great way to also see the ingredients that you will need. So that's another benefit to using the cookbook. When looking through the cookbooks, kind of look for recipes that use a lot of overlapping stuff, especially if it's perishables. Don't purchase a big tub of sour cream and you're just gonna need a little bit. Maybe if you're only gonna need a little bit of sour cream and the sour cream's expensive, you should consider not using that recipe this week. Maybe lump it into another week where you're gonna need more sour cream. Start writing down the ingredients on a piece of paper and start assigning the meals that you are going to be making to a day. You don't necessarily need to eat the food that day. However, it'll give you a good overview of how many meals you actually need and if you have planned enough meals for that week or if you have planned too many meals and then you may have to reassess and go through and get rid of one of your recipes, swap in another, etc. It just depends. Different recipes have different amounts of servings that they generally make. Then at that point, especially if you're not completely sure of what you already have, once you've written down all the ingredients, which would kind of be like your shopping list, you're gonna go through your cupboards, your freezer, your fridge, and you're gonna figure out what you already have and you're gonna cross that off the list. Or if you have almost enough and you're just a little shy, generally don't buy anymore. It's probably fine if you're a little short, especially when it comes to fruit, vegetables, meat. That stuff doesn't have to be completely accurate to what the recipe calls for. And one very specific money saving tip I have when it comes to food planning 
is I will sometimes half the amount of meat that I actually need. So therefore you can spend a lot less money on meat, which is one of the most expensive things you can buy at the grocery store. When you are looking up these recipes in your cookbooks, also keep in mind the price of items. If you don't have saffron at home and you're on a very tight budget and you're probably only gonna use saffron for this recipe, it may not be beneficial to buy saffron because saffron is actually the most expensive herb in the world. So just keep in mind there are things that cost a lot of money and you may never use again and it may not be worth it to buy that $6 bottle or whatever of a specialty vinegar or oil. It can often be swapped out for something else and if it can't be, it's probably good to just consider a different recipe in the first place. Fresh herbs in a recipe can almost always be swapped out for dried herbs and Cheeses, if it's a fancy cheese, look online, see what similar flavors of cheese there are and try to swap it out for a cheaper cheese as well. If you're on a tighter budget, you may want to be looking through flyers and deals that there are that week at certain grocery stores and taking that into consideration when you're looking at your recipes in the cookbooks. That's not something I specifically do. What I do is that if I find that the vegetable or the meat that I plan to use in that recipe is very expensive or there's one that's just a really good price, I will swap it out. Many of the times it's just, you can easily swap out meats and vegetables in recipes. It's not a huge deal, especially if they're kind of a similar flavor or type, like a root vegetable can usually be swapped out for a different root vegetable that is much cheaper. Sometimes people go to several different stores in order to buy their groceries. Um, sometimes that's cheaper and sometimes it's not. People often don't consider the cost in their time and money of gas to go to these different stores. If you're only saving a few cents or a dollar total, it may not be worth it for you to go to that separate store. However, and especially if you buy in bulk or only shop, once a month, it actually may be worth it to go to several different stores. But oftentimes, if you are shopping in all different areas, you live in a small town and you have to go to three faraway stores from each other in order to get the best deals, it may actually be costing you more in gas. So keep that in mind. It's not always best to shop at different stores. However, if they're all near each other, then that would also be another way to save money. If the stores are all close together, you can look through the flyers of all those stores and per pick out what's cheap between the stores and you can probably, especially after you've done it a few times, you might know just generally the non-sale price of items and go to those stores specifically for those items. And as I said, you can go shopping uh, once a month for food. This is something that a lot of people do if they are on very tight budgets and it saves them a lot of money. But on the other end of things, I wouldn't recommend trying to grocery shop more than once a week. It's just too much and you're likely to not plan properly and you're likely to end up having extra food that is going bad and you are throwing out. This is not something everyone does when they food plan, but it's something that I personally do. Um, I actually end up making a lot of my meals ahead of time. So I pre-cook them and they're in my fridge. And actually I've done this today. So I have probably about four days worth of meals in my fridge. I would put them in the freezer and I would recommend doing so, but I actually don't have a very large freezer and I don't really have a separate spot to put a freezer in my apartment. But having these foods pre-made is really helpful. If you're coming home from work and you're just exhausted and you're like, I don't even wanna think about cooking food or I don't wanna wait a half an hour, 45 minutes for food to be ready, you just put it in the microwave, it's already made. Or if it's frozen, pull food out the night before dethaw it or even you can just put it in the oven but it still saves time because you don't have to do all the prep which can also be stressful and that means you're less likely to go out for food you're less likely to pull junk food out of quick meals you're more like you're less likely to pull processed foods out of the freezer that you may have purchased on an impulse buy and so you're more likely to eat healthier but you're also more likely to eat what you actually purchased as I kind of hinted at previously, if you have a freezer or a fairly large freezer, you can pre-make your meals and freeze them. And this also will help when you're food planning once a month. If you're going grocery shopping once a month, having a freezer, a large freezer that you can put all this stuff in is pretty important because your food will probably go bad otherwise. But having food for the next month in the freezer really helps you with not wanting to go out to eat 
and splurge because you can have a wide variety of food and you can select, oh, this is what I want to eat this night. This is what I want to eat that night. I'm not really feeling like this. I got a ton of different types of meals in my freezer. Um, this would probably have to be a freezer bigger than the one that you have on your fridge, except possibly if you live alone. And as well, people who purchase their food once a month and then freeze a lot of their food, they tend to do all their food prep kind of the day that they do groceries. And that ends up saving you a ton of time, especially a ton of manpower because you're not pulling everything out individually, doing it like everything happens all at once, all your months, essentially not completely a uh, food prep is all kind of done at one time, saving you hours of food prep, which everyone will love. Having meals in the freezer also helps for any unexpected guests. So whether you have a big or a small freezer, lots of space to put meals in, I would recommend just always having something in the freezer that you can easily cook up if you have unexpected guests because you don't wanna be paying a hefty restaurant bill or food delivery bill because you had an unexpected guest. So this would be a way to plan and prepare for that so it doesn't kill your budget. Most food items can actually be frozen and that's something that a lot of people don't know and they discover later and they're completely surprised. Like milk can actually be frozen. However, it's kind of a funky looking color. Well, it's not that funky, but it looks different. It's kind of a more yellowy color once you defrost it, but it's perfectly drinkable. It tastes exactly the same. Um, I actually grew up, my mom would actually freeze milk. So this is perfectly normal to me. You can freeze cheese, you can freeze sauces. Um, if you have extra stuff, if you bought a container and you don't use the full container for that item that you were cooking, you can freeze the rest of that usually. I would just recommend going online and seeing if, if it is freezable and how to freeze it as some items you might want to put a um, paper towel with. Uh, bread is also something that's really good to freeze. I know a lot of people don't want to put bread in the fridge, which would allow it to last longer because it goes stale but actually if you put it in the freezer, it doesn't go stale. So that's a benefit of the freezer. When you're putting all these foods in the freezer, especially if you're putting partial cans, uh, leftover cans of stuff or anything like that, and any meals that you put in there, I recommend you keep a list of what you do have in the freezer. That way you will know, especially when you're going to food plan in the future, you have a better idea and you're not gonna forget about the stuff. And then when you're going through your freezer to clean it all out a year later, you're just throwing everything out. So do keep track of what you have in your freezer. So those were my tips and tricks on how to food plan, kind of how to save money while food planning and just the benefits of it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want more videos like this or you want to see more finance related videos, click subscribe as I upload videos regularly. Have a good day. Bye.